Okay, I know I shouldn't have to, but I'm going to do it anyways, even though it won't make a difference, but I just have to point out one thing. The LG G6 is LG's 2017 flagship, therefore it will get my flagship treatment. But that means nothing else that due to the higher price in general, I will be maybe a little bit less forgiving and maybe a little bit more nitpicky, especially compared to something like a mid-ranger. But that's the way I reviewed all flagships so far and why I'm specifically pointing this out in this review you will get that quite soon. So let's get into the design and build quality and let me point out the not that great stuff first, which would be the back in this case, because in my opinion, this feels a little bit hollow, like plastic. And I know it's not, but the whole device itself due to the metal frame actually feels very sturdy and very solid in the hand. But this just takes a little bit of the premium away. But the same thing also is pretty much the same case also on the S8, because that one as well feels a little bit too hollow, a little bit too toy-like in my experience. And in my opinion, especially compared to something like the S7, which feels so much more solid and so much more premium in my opinion. And that's just something that I wanted to point out because it doesn't feel cheap at all, but also not all that premium. And another thing that I want to point out is the weird design because the whole device gets wider towards the back and also on the bottom you can see that. And this just makes the whole device feel bigger, wider and a little bit more unwieldy in the hand than it actually is. And I'm not the biggest fan of that. Yes, due to the angles you should actually be able to hold it a little bit more secure, but also a little bit less comfortable in my opinion. And then of course it will attract quite a lot of fingerprints, but that's not usually an issue for me. We have a little bit of a curve, so in overall it's definitely not bad in the hand. But I think they made this to make the whole device look a little bit more narrow than it actually is. But let me get into a few other things first. The fingerprint reader. I think it's very good because it reacts very nice and it is very reliable. But one thing that you will also already see is that we have quite a long screen on turn on animation and I'm not the biggest fan of that because as you can see it needs quite a long time. Actually one of the flagships with the longest screen on time that I've ever seen, actually all phones in general and that's just something that I'm not the biggest fan of, especially if you have it blocked in your pocket and you want to try this, it won't even do this so you have to already take it out and usually what I do is already put my finger on it when I'm in the pocket, take it out and the screen is on. So this just doesn't work as convenient as on most other phones out there. Of course we then have the dual camera with the LEDs. On the top we have the headphone jack and the microphone. On the left side we have the volume rocker. The buttons in my opinion feel quite nice. A little bit click and maybe feedback would have been nice but it works out quite okay. We have the USB Type-C with the speaker and the microphone here on the left. One thing about the fingerprint reader as well, this acts as the power button as well. And this is a little bit unfortunate because if you have the screen turned on and have it on a desk for example, then you have the trade-off that you can't really turn it off besides double tapping on the navigation bar. And this usually works, but it's just not my preferred way. What you will also of course already see is that the device with the 18 by 9 aspect ratio is a little bit taller, which makes the whole device feel more narrow, especially due to the kind of 5.7 inch display. But as on the S8, I will just point out one thing. In my opinion, this is a little bit of a fake 5.7 inch display because if you use a proper fablet with 5.7 inches you will see the difference because you pretty much mostly perceive the width and not so much the height and yes it's nice to have a little bit more but I actually compared it side by side and what you maybe usually get is like one or two lines more especially since the LG has a more than usual high navigation bar it's just bigger and therefore it also needs to be in general a little bit higher and you don't really get so much of a benefit. Yes, for media, it will make maybe more of a difference, especially if you have something full screen running. But then again, I just have to point out YouTube, which has pillar bars. And with these pillar bars, you then maybe effectively get what is also what you in general perceive is maybe a 5.3 inch, maybe 5.2 inch device. But I don't want to bash it too much. Otherwise, on the front, we have also a notification LED, of course, the camera and on-screen buttons. So all in all, it's not that bad, but I'm not quite blown away. When it comes to the display, one thing that I just want to point out is that one thing that is very weird is color adjustment, because the way they do this, and this is something that I don't really get, is this. Because you have this weird slider that you can move around to change the calibration, but you can't really change the 
the saturation and so on like you would expect it to do and that's why I didn't get quite the calibration that I wanted because I have to say the display actually isn't super bright with just 520 lux. Usually flagships gets at around 600 and plus but it still gets fine because I said 550, 450 is good enough for me. Then the viewing angles are stable. What is really good though is the white point and maybe the best thing is the black because we have the least amount of IPS glow that I've ever seen and even though the white maybe is a little bit on the colder side and you could slightly adjust it with that weird color adjustment I still think the calibration in general is not the very best one because I think the colors in general seem a little bit too pale compared to many other phones these days and overall a little bit too bright so even though it is a high quality high res very nice display I'm not quite fully impressed, mostly due to the uh, calibration though. If you could adjust it a little bit more flexible, I think you could get exactly what you want, but the way it's calibrated, it is still a flagship display, but not the most impressive one, at least not for me. Now let's get into the speaker. No complaints about the speaker because I think that one makes actually a quite good job because it's not just loud but it also sounds quite nicely balanced and of course you will have to reflect it to get the best sound out of it because without it sounding a little bit muffled but I'm actually fully pleased with that one because the overall sound experience of the speaker is quite good. Also good is the headphone jack but here in this case I have to point out that I have the European in this case German version which doesn't have any sort of deck or anything like that which is weird because in Europe we get the kind of weakest version of all of them no deck no wireless charging and only 32 gigabytes of ram but it's still a good headphone jack but i guess quite far away from what we would get somewhere else okay let's get into the performance let me kill off all the apps and then let's just start a few as you can see things sometimes need a little bit of time especially if you kill off all the apps but then you can see it's definitely quite a snappy device it's not crazy fast but I have no complaints here at all it is a legit flagship in terms of launch times and so on and the overall perceived performance definitely is on a flagship level maybe though closer to a 2016 or late 2016 flagship because yes browsing performance absolutely smooth absolutely great but I can still see a difference compared to something like an S8 or Xiaomi Mi 6 which already have this generation Snapdragon with the 8 35 or the new Exynos and even though I can't complain at all about the performance because it's very very nice especially with the four gigabytes of RAM ultra multitasking usually is absolutely fine as you can see here you can jump between all those apps and it works out absolutely fine and it is a top performer but like I said there is a little bit of a difference visible after all to better phones these days but this will still after all hold up for one or two years as a flagship still without any problems so I have no doubts about that. When it comes to games though I have to just point out one thing what you should in my opinion do is set the resolution down to 1080 or what is in this in this case called medium settings with high frame rates because if you use everything to the max so the best resolution and the best frame rates I think the performance of the Snapdragon 821 on these high resolution displays is isn't quite good enough because in that case you will just notice a little bit more frame drops a little bit more skips and just not at high frame rates in general so set it to medium in terms of resolution and then you will get at least a very good experience but I've seen this way better on the S8 for example also on the Mi 6 that can push higher resolutions in case of the S6 just way nicer but it doesn't change the fact that you can play all the games yes it will get quite warm this device due to the glass back you will feel it a little bit more but what also was a little bit more a little bit weird though is that the frame actually gets a little bit uncomfortably warm even sometimes in normal use but I would say it's time for the battery now a full charge from 5 to 100% takes 1 hour and 40 that's absolutely fine and 12% for 1 hour of YouTube is also just a little bit above average but still now what is great though and something that I did not expect to see on such a high level is the battery life itself because on mobile data only I got about five to five and a half hours even possible with on Wi-Fi not be that much more maybe like six and a half but possibly even seven hours and that with a brightness of 60 at home but outside I had to actually bump it up to 65 because the display gets quite late quite bright which is normal for LG but just something I think I had to point out. No. When it comes to the software, I think it actually looks a little bit too minimal by these days because we pretty much have just white, black and this kind of teal color and it looks very minimal which is nice 
but I would wish for maybe something a little bit more appealing by these days, but I have no complaints at all because as you can see, we have of course the app draw, we have the customizable quick settings and we have some other nice features of course due to, due to a, a nougat we have split screen and so on, but not to that many. So a few of devices already offer more. We have a theming engine, which is quite nice and something I would definitely use. Notifications you can adjust, display, like I said. But otherwise, yeah, I would say definitely what it is, is a solid software, no frilled software though, nothing major, but it doesn't seem to bog down to performance or so. And usually LG these days is known for quite few or quite quick updates. So yeah, no complaints, all fine. Let's get into the camera and what I have to say, and this is pretty much my only complaint, is the selfie cam, because as you can see, n at no point in time ever I got a selfie that looked 100% in focus. Especially here, my beard always looks out of focus, also my forehead and indoors things are pretty much the same. So I would say it's maybe a good selfie cam at best. I'm not quite even sure why, and even if you use the wide angle one, but Low light capabilities here are once again very good because as you can see here with the flash and even without almost no difference and this is highly respectable and also as you can see pictures turn out to be very sharp. Shutter times were a little bit slower than outside but still absolutely fine and this is very good. Now as you can see here are a few more low light pics because a few people wanted those compared to with lighting as you can see here this looks absolutely nice. And here once again with light, as you can see, of course, this was not at the same time, just so we are clear. Of course, outside you can see great pictures and overall it appears to be very natural because it's not over sharpened, but it's also not like blurry or so. So I found, I think they found quite a nice compromise in terms of overall appeal, in terms of details, sharpness, colors look very nice. Shutter times were fast and all, all the color, the exposure seems absolutely great. So it is definitely easily a great camera. I'm not someone who makes the more, most in-depth camera review, so don't take my word for it, but I'm actually super pleased. And as you can here see, absolutely nice. Here, the wide angle camera, actually for someone who's interested in that, you will get quite a nice experience but I'm not that person. Now in terms of video here, 4K, yes, a little bit artifacting on very fast movement, but otherwise in general, even though we had some quite hard transition from light to bright, you can see that we have a high amount of sharpness. The autofocus, as you can see here as well, works a little bit on the slower side, but very accurate and very reliable. We have OIS on the main cam, which is slightly noticeable after all in video, but still absolutely okay, all good. and. That's why I would say let's already get to the pros and cons. But before I'm actually going to display them, let me point out one thing. Yes, we have a lot on the con side, but a lot of them are minor things. But after all, all of these can sum up. So let's just start with them. The first thing that I want to point out is that the device in hand feels absolutely solid due to the quite thick metal frame. We have a very good fingerprint reader. The display is high quality, but for some reason it didn't quite fully blow me away. But what is amazing is the extremely low IPS glow. The speaker is loud and good, so I'm fully satisfied here after all. And even though it's just on the EU version, it is still a good headphone jack. We have absolutely great performance, but there is a little bit room for better phones, like for example, the newer generation with the Snapdragon 845 or so. And the gaming performance was maybe just very good. We have though, great battery life without any compromises, absolutely great. And you could even get through two days with that one. Solid software. In terms of the cam, the front facing cam is good. Low light cam is very good, but therefore the camera, especially with wide angle is great. And the same goes for the video. Now let's get into all those minor things that I just wanna slightly complain about. First of all, the phone gets wider towards the back, which makes it feel a little bit wider and also a little bit less comfortable. It just feels slightly bulky compared to these days competition. The back also sounds a little bit hollow like plastic. 18 by 9 actually gets quite easily top heavy which I noticed during typing because I always was afraid that the device wouldn't fall over. It is also oddly long screen on turn on time that I have to point out with the weird color adjustment option and color slim are slightly too pale for me. Rounded corners aren't round at all. I guess you've heard about that somewhere else already, so I don't have to get into that. Regional hardware differences is something that I don't like to see so much, like the DAC, storage and wireless charging. The higher than normal navbar is something that slightly turned me off. The app scaling, something that I did not talk about, causes minimal microstutters. Just something I would point out, so just leave it the app scaling uh, the way it is. And the selfie cam is maybe not quite on par with the main cam. So at the end of the day, where does this phone stand? Is it a legit 2017 flagship? 
And this is where I'm not quite sure because yes, it is after all flagship and it can hold up quite well in general in overall with something like an S8. But still, I also have to say, and this is kind of what I wanted to call this review, this is a sheep in wolf's clothing because yes, you get the new aspect ratio, you get the smaller bezels and so on. But at the end of the day, you don't really feel the taller display so much more. It doesn't feel like a 5.7 inch or so. It feels more like a 5.3 inch and then this comes along with that size. The qualities overall are quite high though, but as I said, there are a few just minor annoyances. For example, I'm not the biggest fan of the design because it feels just a little bit too boxy, too bulky to me and with the odd angles, I'm not all that happy. The screen turn on time was a little bit slow. The gaming performance maybe wasn't the best one. So there are a few things that I could nag about. Also, especially what is not that fair are the regional differences, but it is. And I know overall this whole review sounded way too negative, but it is a great phone. And it is definitely not one that I would for a split second think about buying myself because it just doesn't check all the boxes that I want. But if you like a great camera, especially with the wide angle, if you like that screen calibration, if you want more, I would say natural colors, even though they seemed a little bit too weirdly brightened up and you want it a little bit more sturdy, bulky in hand feel, you will get a great experience, especially if the price drops a little bit, which is already has been done. But at the end of the day, which I already said once, I am not fully convinced that it can completely compete with something like the S8 for mainstream, because I'm not seeing this the way as many reviewers will see it, but I just see it as the mainstream consumer. They will see the kind of more appealing look of the S8 and it has the newer processor after all and so on. Even though there is not a huge objective difference, I think a lot of people will perceive it like that and Personally, I have to say, I did not quite get what I expected it to be, but I don't have to because, like I said, I am very nitpick in general and I am a little bit less forgiving. But, yeah, this phone also gave me quite a lot of even though minor things to pick on. So <laughs> that's where I'm going to leave it. You know the drill, you know the rest, thumbs up and so on. But, yeah, okay, until next time. Bye.